Skanda is not a polygamous country. I've been living life. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, in today's video, I'm going to be talking about things you should know before you move to Canada as a two-person team. I mean, a man and a woman and living together or polygamy, basically. So my husband saw this and write up on Instagram. I sent it to me that I should talk about it in case people don't know. Just use it as a reference to make a video, you know. I see, yeah, we stand a supportive husband. <laughs> anyway, um, a few days ago, someone named Today Tash posted some points on um, Instagram. I'm not, I'm not affiliated with him, but Today Tash is also a content creator for Canada Immigration, so you can check his page out for more information about Canada and immigration. Anyway, let's get right into today's video because that's last. All of us is the recycling information. So in the next two, three years, we'll see this video and use it to make a video, you know. So anyway, the first point is Canada is not a polygamous country. To my African brothers and sisters, it is illegal to marry more than one wife. In Canada. According to the Canadian law, polygamy is a criminal offense and any form of poly polygamous marriage, even if it's legal in your country, is not recognized under the Canadian law. If you're married to more than one spouse, only one can immigrate to Canada with you. The other spouse or basically the other wife cannot be sponsored for immigration unless you are legally divorced with the first wife. So try not to share your husband, you know, because let's not be like it's you that you now leave behind. <laughs> Anyway, the Canadian government requires proof of legal and um, monogamous marriage for spousal sponsorship application. Yeah, polygamy can often be coercive and abusive in the Canadian law. You know, it does. It's contrary to the Canadian values because how will you satisfy them equally? You eat here, you sleep here, you would. You know, they just they are just thinking that how will it really work? I'm sure a lot of people will be like, but your forefathers did it. Go and ask your foremothers, right? Because most of them were not in. Happy marriage, they just they just knew how to look away, but Canada cannot look away. So this prohibition is against um, anyone because they're trying to protect marriage basically. So when applying for immigration, you need to provide documentation proving that there's a dissolution of your previous marriages if you are currently in the monogamous one now. So failure to disclose this um, or attempting to circumvent this regulation can lead to severe consequences, including rejection of your immigration application or deportation if you are already in Canada. So it's very crucial to understand this legal requirement and ensure that your marriage status aligns with the Canadian law when you, when you when considering migration. Seeking advice from immigration consultants can provide further guidance and help you navigate the complexity of Canadian immigration law, right? As I was putting this together, I opened Facebook one day and I saw a post upon checking to a Nigerian man, you know, seeing and the comments got me laughing, talking about, you know, two wives and I was like, Please. anyway, I'll just read it and, and I'll put, so the man said that as a Muslim with two wives, how can I apply for PR under express entry? My second wife is a primary applicant and how can I inform my RCC during the education that I have more than one spouse, although my first wife would not be accompanying me to Canada if approved. And a man named Said Osman, who looks like a Muslim and Indian, replied saying, you can't come to Canada being said that you have two wives. I think the kind of English that they speak, right? Nothing, there's nothing further to discuss on the topic because as per Canada law, you can only have one wife. Please don't try to play with the system and have faith on the Lord. You will get a new food that is written for you. Good luck, man. You have two wives. Enjoy the life, man. Your country is none less than the good. You just need to find the right way. If you are already rich, then live your life. And I was just wondering, like, man. Anyway, <laughs> let's get to number two. If you have a girlfriend or boyfriend and you've been living together, you know, you can both claim um, common law status and apply for, to immigrate to Canada together. Canada, a common law relationship is very recognized for immigration purposes. If you have lived together, in a conjugal relationship for at least 12 months. So if you live together for at least a year, those so those of you that are living with man, you guys have a shot in, at coming to Canada <laughs> if you have the documents and the money. So to establish common relationship, you must provide evidence that you guys are cohabiting and that you just, uh, just provide documents for the nature of your relationship. This can include shared financial accounts, joint leases of property agreements, utility bills with both names and correspondent addressed to both partners at the same address. Additionally, affidavits from friends and family attesting to your to the authenticity of your relationship can support this claim. So have good friends that is willing to vouch for your relationship. Yeah. So both of you must be paying for something in a house and not just one person, not just the man paying for everything, not the woman paying for everything. The Canadian immigration system recognizes common relationships. 
similar to legal marriages, provided that there is a substantial proof of genuine and ongoing partnership. Yep. So this recognition allows common law partners to apply for spousal sponsorship under the family class immigration program. I made a video about this last year. You could put it no watch. Anyway, I'll put a link somewhere here. Anyway, it is important to gather and maintain thorough documentation of your cohabitation and shared life to meet the evidence requirement. Yeah, so the third thing is Canada does not recognize marriage by proxy with the exception of people in armed force anyway. So if both of you are not physically present during your ceremony, the marriage cannot stand. For instance, one person is in Canada, one person is in Kenya or Nigeria when the ceremony took place. Mm. So now you understand why those of people come to Nigeria to get married, even though it's expensive. You know, because Canada does not recognize marriages by proxy. With the exception of those, you know, under specific situations, sure. So I'm just trying to put that out there. So the marriage of proxy, both parents and I mean, both in the marriage of in the marriage of proxy, both partners are not there, and you put pillow or picture. You know, I have a friend of mine that did this, but he it went to the US. So <laughs> according to the Canada law, for marriage to be recognized under the legal um, law, both persons have to be present during the ceremony. This means that if one of the spouses in Canada and the other one is somewhere else, Canada would not recognize this marriage. The requirement for both parties to be physically present ensures the authenticity of the marriage and prevents potential issues such as forged marriages or marriages of convenience. For immigration purposes, a marriage by proxy cannot be used to sponsor a spouse to Canada. So couples who have done marriage by proxy need to do another marriage that will align with the Canada, you know, law. So if you find yourself in a situation whereby you've been in a marriage by proxy, it's advisable to have a legally recognized ceremony before applying for immigration to ensure the compliance with the Canadian regulations. The fourth thing is, if you sponsor your spouse to Canada, you are financially responsible for them up to three years, even if both of you are divorced after they become a peer. Yeah, so be very sure they are coming for love and not for the Bali blue passport. So this financial undertaking is a serious commitment and is legally binding. So when you support, you know, when you sponsor your spouse, you must sign an undertaking, an agreement with the Canadian government, promising to provide for their basic needs. So this includes food, clothing, shelter, health care, and not that their health care will be covered by the government, you know. So this res the responsibility begins the moment they become a peer, and it continues for three years, regardless of if you guys divorce or not. I mentioned this in my last video, if you should watch. So it's very crucial to understand that if the marriage ends in divorce, your financial responsibility does not end. You still be paying that person, you still be supporting that person. So you are still obligated to support your ex-spouse for the remainder of the three years period. This legal obligation is designed to prevent sponsored individuals from becoming dependent on social assistance, which is government money. So thereby protecting our resources, the, the public resources. Given the significant responsibilities, it's important to ensure that your spouse's intentions are genuine and that they are coming to Canada for real love and a shared life together, rather than just to obtain the Canada residency. The government takes marriage fraud seriously. I'm sure it's on my videos too. So if it's determined that you entered solely because of immigration, it can have serious consequences. You will go to jail. <laughs> Including the revo revocation of the spousal um, PR and also has a potential legal penalty for the sponsor. Before proceeding with sponsorship, it is advisable to have a thorough understanding of the legal and financial responsibilities of sponsorship. So the fifth and the last point is that the student, your spouse can join you in Canada. They will be given unrestricted open work permit and the validity will be the end of your study permit. So if FSW did not work or PMP doesn't work, but one of you is a strong study permit candidate, then you might want to consider it. So if this, this, this work permit um, allows your spouse to work in Canada for any employer and the valid is until the end of your study permit. So this can be a significant advantage as it provides your spouse the flexibility to gain Canadian work experience which can be beneficial for your PR applications later. So if you're considering any immigration pathway such as the Federal Skilled Workers or Provincial Nominee um, Program and this option does not work out, applying for a study permit might be a valuable alternative. Canada plays high value on international students and studying in Canada can serve as a stepping stone to your PR. When not one of you qualifies as a strong candidate for study permit, it can open doors for both of you. The students can pursue their education while their company spouse can gain work experience. 
this dual approach can significantly enhance your prospects for permanent residency as Canada work and study experience are highly valued in immigration assessment. Additionally, the time spent in Canada can help build a life and network, make friends, office, you know, making transition to PR very smooth. Many international students and their spouses find this pathway to be strategic and effective way to achieve their long-term immigration goals, just like my husband and I did. He was studying, I was at a full-time. <laughs> so before proceeding, it's essential to carefully review the requirements for study permits and work permits, as well as the eligibility career for PR um, pathways. So that was what yeah, Lefa and I did. He was studying, but I wasn't here at that time anyway. But I was in training. But if I was here, if I came with him, you know, that would have been the pathway that we would have um, gone with. So I hope this um, five points helps you guys. So think well before you get married to wives. Today is Sunday, yeah. Today is Sunday, the eleventh of August, and I'm tired. We just came back in. It's around nine p.m. I went for our friend's naming ceremony. So I just said that okay, I look good, I feel good. Let me just make a video because after I come back from work. I want to go and sleep. <laughs> so anyway, thank you guys for watching and um, I'll see you guys again.